All right, so where are we? Uh, the monitor provides useful information about the local airspace. You are surprised that it is still operating. Wait, if the readings are correct, then that large ship that shut you down is still up there. You're going to have to get past that ship to get off this planet. All right, so we still are on the planet. But hopefully we can get another ship to get there. The only items of interest in the wall are an eye chart, a control panel, and a large radar monitor. The eye chart. They must have used this to administer vision tests to spacecraft pilots. You give the chart a quick glance, and I'm pleased to see that you still have 2020 vision. Hint from the game would have been that you saw this location when you got killed, but couldn't access it so far. What do you mean? I mean, yeah, that is what happened. I tried going here, and we got killed. So then I just crossed it off as just, okay, you go there equals death. Nothing that we, and no changes that we made made the location safe. It's apparently some, the repair woman who was at a bar, apparently since we were last doing stuff, apparently went and actually repaired this. But yeah, it would have been better if they had showed, I don't know, if you'd encountered the repair woman somehow, or there would have been some indication that things got fixed. Because, I don't know. Not the best. What is this? This is a control panel. Anti-grav control, pad one and pad two. Remote timer, start timer. You look carefully at the anti-grav controls and make a mental note that they are in fact, anti oh, that's just generic. Okay. No, no, not press, I put right click, dude. All right, hang on. Before we mess around with this, I just wanna see what else is here. Um, we got equipment. You recognize the equipment around here as being essential to a small airfield. Oh, good. The radar screen and the anti-grav control panels are dead giveaways. Dead giveaway. The public address speaker remains quiet. You are thankful for this because judging from it, it is size, it would make a great deal of noise. And these people didn't know how to spell its. Wires, ducts, and girders cover the building. Apparently the builders left it unfinished. This looks like every other teleporter you have seen on this planet. The door is currently closed. Let's try it. Are we gonna die because of the gravity control? Something? Let's see what happened. Ooh, launch pad. This launch pad does not appear to be in good shape. In fact, a tree has grown straight through it. The same tree has also caused irreparable damage to a small spacecraft that was sitting on it. This ship is in sad shape. A tree grew through it at some point in its history, destroying most of the engine components. This ship is not going anywhere. The trees here closely resemble the trees you saw on the island near your crash site. Perhaps you aren't too far from there. Oh, perhaps. The bushes are thick and impassable. They seem to be the predominant form of vegetation on this part of the planet. The sky is blue and cloudless. Walk across the launch pad. Where's launch pad McQuack? Okay, we, there's a path down the east. There's another launch pad over there with a ship sitting on it. Oh, good. Check it out. I know we're gonna have to do the controls, but let's just see what our current state of affairs looks like. The launch pad here is in much better shape than the one to the west. No trees have grown through it. The bushes seem to have been kept clear and the ship sitting on it looks as if it's in reasonably good condition. Wow, now this is a neat ship. It's got a warp coil, quad laser cannons, Kleiner defense screens, and a conventional thruster pack that really packs a wallop. This ship is in good shape. That may have once been some kind of air traffic control tower. It is difficult to determine the original layout of the spaceport since the native vegetation has covered most of it. Okay, uh, bushes, same thing. Trees, same. Sky, same. Description. There's a rock. You look carefully at the rock. Okay, generic. And we can't walk anywhere else here. But we can go in the ship. All right. Bathing suit, you love the thick bush. So I guess this is we're going to use our target module and the shield modulator. Through the glass, you can see the trees in the distance. Instrumentation appears to be in working order. You are confident that you could pilot this craft. After spending a moment examining the controls, you are confident that you could fly the ship. Glancing at the status panel, you learn that you have a full tank of fuel, that the warp coils are in good shape, and that you are sitting in a one gravity field. So probably have to turn that off. Service panel? No. 
want to look at the service panel, not exit. Come on. I right clicked. Oh, we're looking at it closer. Service panel. You look carefully at the service panel and make a mental note that isn't found. Generic. Target module. Oh, you just do it automatically. I just right clicked and you remove. Inserted the target module. Remove life support module. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, remove the life. It would be unwise to remove the life support module. Okay, now we can insert. The, we can also install the shield modulator. <laughs> Sears. Okay. Um, <laughs> TP. Whoever once owned this ship was prepared for long journeys with the toilet paper. Nice. Oh, there's a crack here, though. There's a small fracture in the ship's canopy. It may still be airworthy, but you would feel nervous taking the ship into hard vacuum in this condition. Oh, let's do it. I want to see it. Throttle. Okay, nothing. So push, push the throttle. Well, we'll probably have to do it in... Ignition or something first. You shove on the throttle. Nothing particular happens. Hmm. Look at the stats panel again. Still the one. Yeah, we probably need to fix that. But push instrumentation. No. Push control. Oh, we probably need to use the the um, what you call it there. The um, cement. Let's try applying the cement to the uh, windshield, the cracker. Yep. You squirt a large blob of poly cement into the deepest section of the crack. The cement hardens almost instantly. You are confident that your handiwork will allow you to fly through space without losing cabin pressure. Nice. All right, so I think we got to change the controls now. Is there any, like, uh, on power button or something? I guess power is on, but... All right, I guess we got to go out and change the gravity or something. Oh, there's a seat, too. The seat is quite comfortable. You have been wanting one of these sports models for some time, but never seem to have the money. All right, let's do a ship save. All right, so it looks like we need... To... I think we've used all of our inventory. We'll do a quick check, but... Except for the vase, of course, which we have to hand in. So let's see what the buttons we have to fix over there. So is this supposed to be creaking? What's the deal with the music? Is it supposed to be like, I don't know, animals in the jungle situation? Strange. You're stupid. All right, so, okay, so pad one, that's the one that's broken. Oh, so there's a timer here. Oh, let's turn that. Push the remote on. Start the timer. Hmm, all right. Uh, can we save at the anti-graph controls? Yeah, because yeah, we don't know exactly what, <laughs> what we're doing. But we seem to have changed the one thing we could change, so. <laughs> See if it does anything. So we switch it from timer to remote. So you can't have both engaged at the same time, huh? Don't no. mess with it. This won't do anything, right? Because that that pad, that control pad, launch pad is bork. Borked. Yeah, it's the only button you can change. You just flip between remote and timer, which is weird, too. There's like a... Is the ship, is there like a timer countdown to launching? Like how to, no, it seems strange. Oh yeah, Mike, oh, wow. Who knew that that toilet paper emote would actually come in handy? Huh? I think I only have one. I have the, uh, I got the, uh, what is it called? The capture, it's like a chess emote or something. Again, it's very difficult to tell what it looks like in small. It looks like a ball of fire if you're not, like, zoomed in on it. K 
Can't tell what it is otherwise. It's just strange. Alright, can we lift off? You shove on the throttle, nothing happens. Look at the stats panel. Okay, we're still sitting in a one gravity field. Is there a... I must be missing the something here. By the way, so what haven't we used? Um, I think we've used everything. Oh, let's read our log. That's nothing. Yeah, we record some neat stuff. No, nothing there. All right, so how, do, how the hell do we take off? Maybe pull the throttle? There we go. You give the throttle a, full pull, a few pulls, then realize that this ship was designed for low gravity or no gravity launches. You are sitting in full gravity, so this ship isn't going anywhere. All right, so we need to turn that off. Okay. And yeah, we're in one gravity. We need low gravity or null gravity, you said? Or like zero gravity, right? Yeah, no. Okay. All right, good. So let's go back to the anti-grav panel. It's weird because I don't understand how remote and timer have anything to do with like gravity. It's weird. Uh, to be fair, we didn't try it the other way, but that looks unlikely. What if we press this again? What if both are, can we both be off? Okay, these aren't controls. We can't undo the screwdriver. Start timer. Nothing happens though. Huh. So I guess we can leave it as is. I never pulled the throttle with the default situation here. Can't do anything with these wires. So now remote is off and timer is on. Do we have to like repair something here? Hmm. Speaker equipment. Open the equipment. All right. Well, let's just let's just try getting it open with the the all. This was the default configuration. We push the throttle instead of pulling it. Can we get any spare parts from the ship? You know, other parts of the ship we can mess with. I'm gonna guess this isn't gonna work either, but. So strange, remote timer. There's no sense as to whether the gravity's on or off. Like, bizarre. Okay, pull, throttle. Okay, yeah. All right, so that didn't change anything. All right. As expected, but I just want to eliminate the easy solutions first before we try to do more. This is, I mean, we're on pad two, right? So let's see, pressing some other buttons, see if anything else does anything. Okay, what if we press timer button two and then press the timer? Ah, there we go, so now something's happening. Is it gonna take off without us or no? <laughs> okay, good, it's just, uh-oh, it might. Well, no, now it's just in the no gravity. What, oh no, <laughs> oh no. That dinosaur got lifted up. How are we gonna get inside the ship now? That was the question. See, let's find out. Maybe now we have to hit the remote then. Yeah, I have a feeling you have to hit the remote now. But this could be a fun death, so I'm gonna try to do it anyway. We might just float up just like that little animal did. I think it looked like a dinosaur. But... Um, I think now you probably have to change it to remote so we can do like a, I don't know. What? Oh no, apparently some small animal wandered into the anti-grav beam when you turned it on. When the timer ran out and the beam turned off, the poor thing came down hard. Hey look, a six chambered heart, neat. All right, let's take that guts for science. 
<laughs> what? You're laughing at it? Oh, dude. What the fuck, Rex? He started laughing? The fact that the animal got killed? What the fuck? Is that really necessary? Rex, you suck. First you killed a dog, and now you're laughing at some animal that got killed by your recklessness? Not. Nah. What a jerk. All right, so I think, yeah, we do need to change it to remote. I am not liking this Rex Nebula. Not at all. Cruel. What? Hey, 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 what is this? We got, oh, there's the remote. It looks like the remote control for your audio tape player, except that it only has one button. The dialogue was in poor taste. Although it sounds to me like it was probably just, yeah, I don't know. You pick up the odd looking remote control and put it in your bucket. The odd looking remote control has only one button on it. It also has a small inscription on the side. Please return to Golden Pipe Spaceport. Hmm. So maybe, can we just activate it? Let's get another save, but maybe we can just activate it when we're in the ship so we don't have to turn anything on the anti graph. Oh, but we have to switch back over to the remote. So that just randomly falls down <laughs> after you do the timer, I guess. I guess we can't make it in time for the timer. So yeah, I I, I would assume we have to uh, change it to remote. And then uh, activate the remote when we're in the ship. But it might be fun to set it to... Um, Set it to remote and then activate the remote when we're not in the ship. Curious if that does anything. Yeah, tons of time sequences. Games, for whatever reason, love to do it at like the end of the game against the you know the final boss confrontation or whatever, which is really just annoying because it's usually some dumb solution to games that tend to do that. And then you end up having to try like 60 billion things and continually restore. Not a fan of that. Not only do I not like those time sequences in adventure games, but I also don't like real time, like ga adventure games that are real time. All right, so we activate the remote. It would be safer to wait until you were inside the ship before activating the remote. Oh, okay. I figure they wouldn't let us do it, but I had to try. Oh yeah, what's in your salad video? Yeah, real-time games generally make things kind of stressful. And I mean, I like to relax. I like, I like to, you know, look at all the descriptions and see, get the, you know, which oftentimes can be funny, or at least you get like a good atmosphere and environment for where you are. But all right, activate that remote, please, Rex. When it's real-time, you just feel really rushed and stressed to do whatever you need to do. Can't enjoy the game as much. All right, pull this throttle, please. You give the throttle a pull and feel the engines fire up. I'm out of here with one T. Taking advantage of extra memory. All right, we've escaped the planet. I wonder if we could have done this without installing the new targeting module. Oh, we're finally back on the women. Oh, we blew them up. Rex Nebula. Okay, I hope that was <laughs> looked like a warp. So you see, I've earned my 75,000 Galactars. 
No, he knocked over the vase. Oh, that's it. Oh my god. <laughs> Game ends. So you spend all that all time. You spend 11 hours and 4 minutes to acquire the vase, which Rex promptly knocks over <laughs> at the end. So we won't be earning any Galactars for that. <laughs> it's kind of a good ending. Kind of a good ending, actually. I can appreciate that. This is no time to play the fool. Oh, Rex. Wow. That is interesting, though, that you think in a game like this he would end up, I don't know, charming the women or saving them from something else, and then they would turn their attitude toward him, and then you get to, like, sleep with all of them or something. But no, it just turns out he was the, uh, they were enemies the entire time, and we just... We indirectly led to all the women on the base dying, or most of them. <laughs> and then he goes back and gets his revenge after they shot, uh, after they shot his ship down, he goes back into space and shoots them down. Or b blows them up. Wow. It is strange though, again, I think we were talking about that the, I don't know, roughly the second half of the game, you don't really interact with any women whatsoever. So it seems like they took this basic, you know, leisure suit Larry, leather goddesses of Phobos type, you know, premise, and then basically drop it more or less halfway through. And the gender bender, you really only use maybe twice to solve puzzles. Not as much as you would think, or I think they could have maybe done a little bit more of an interesting game design to have to have you go back and forth and figure out how to do stuff as a just a man or just a woman. But um, So I think the game... There were some interesting things, and I mean, some of the deaths were really good, but there were other times they could have easily made you do deaths that they didn't let you. So, like, uh... The game definitely had some good stuff going for it, but I feel like it's also a little bit of missed potential, because it hinted at other stuff it could have done, but didn't. And again, a lot of it, particularly the second half, felt very lifeless with exploring the, you know, the abandoned city... And then the base where everyone got killed, most of the game was actually like that in those two areas. So, it, um, yeah, it's not very PC, but, uh, I mean, it doesn't hold up as well. The gender bender part about the sex change obviously doesn't, you know, you'd look at that very differently today in 2020 as you would have in 92 at the time. So, uh, that doesn't pass the muster, but looking at it at the time, if you can get past that and look at just the... I mean, the design was like, okay, I, I just kind of wanted a little bit more from it. It wasn't it wasn't a disaster or a bad game, and particularly considering it's Microprose's first adventure game. They had a good foundation here, but... I almost would have... I almost kind of found myself wanting them to push things more. Like, if you're going to make something with adult humor, they should have leaned into it more, I think. Yeah, so it was better than... Yeah, Austin, I agree. I... It was better than I expected, but um, with what they set up, I feel like they could have, they should have done more in that direction. Missed opportunity to use the gender bender to smuggle a pipe bomb pew pew pew. <laughs> oh my god, Marvel. Oh my god. Thank you for the 100 bits. Oh, that's an idea. Yeah, Game Starts Strong loses its steam. Oh man. Yeah, and then the game kind of loses its momentum. <laughs> There's a credit for blood curdling screams. I like that. But yeah, it did lose some steam. It lost some momentum. There, there's not really. I mean, you see those women who shoot you down. You don't on the ship. You, we didn't see them until the ending cutscene. So, I don't know. There. And like with the whole professor getting blown up, and then the women, the two women in the lab. Nothing really happened with them after they gave us the examination. It was just weird. It looks like, I don't know whether they had to make compromises in dev or design based on budget reasons or having to rush things but it, it looked like they set up a lot of stuff that, that never had any payoff for it, I don't know. so it kind of felt strange and slightly unsatisfactory oh yeah that's right thank you Mike we, uh, thank you for reminding me there were some bonus content included on the disc that we need to check out one of them I think it looked like if I'm remembering right was actually like a death roll so we can actually see all the deaths and see I'm hoping we got most of them, but we can see both the ones that we got, especially if you guys missed them, but then also, of course, more importantly, the ones that we missed. So that'll be great to check out and see, see, yeah, see what other little extras they have. 
So, uh, yeah, better than I was expecting, but still, you know, missed opportunities. But um, it's interesting to check out imperfect stuff like this, you know. They clearly were, you know, they were basically trying to merge two popular Sierra series, you know, Space Quest and the Leisure Suit Larry into one, and uh, it was only mixed results for sure. Yeah. Maybe those were red herrings. Well, I'm not just talking about puzzles though, BDR. I'm also talking about like the, they introduced that, remember that woman who gave us the um, scientific examination? No, nothing ever happened to her after that medical examination or whatever. Look at this, no animals were hurt, maimed, squashed, mutilated, run through garbage disposers, shredded, used to test trash, test trash compactors, or otherwise damaged during production of this game, honest. Well, apparently, though, that does they were crushed by a car, which you also didn't... <laughs> there was no disclaimer there about that. Yeah, so I'm talking about from, like, a narrative standpoint. They set some stuff up that... And, like, what happened to our friend that we made in jail that uh, escaped? Oh, it opens up quotes. There's a new option on the main menu here. Check that out. Uh, remember our... Whatever his name was, Sorok or something? He escaped and then we didn't, I thought we were gonna see, you know, meet back up with him or hear what happened to him or something, but I guess not. All right, selected quotes from the Rex Nebular development team. Does room 309 have guard chunks or monster chunks on the floor? Mike Gibson. Conveniently, the bloody chunks fly into the next room. Matt Grusin. I think he should wet himself. Frank Frazier, scrounging for Rex animation ideas. Do you know how embarrassing it is to walk into a store and ask to be shown an Elvis costume? Ken Nishue, having recently purchased Colonel Stone's costume. Oh, I guess because they, they used that for the filming. Hey, Brian, do you want to excrete this? Charlie Shenton. Our dear Rex is blown in half. Ginny Schmidt in Damon Code comments. That scream sounds too much like someone is poking him with a cattle prod. Jeff Briggs listening to our little collection of blood-curdling screams. As far as I'm concerned, Delta is a four-letter word. Ken Nishue, admiring certain features of the sprite system. I don't know, this, is, this seems like inside jokes from the dev team. I don't know. There are a couple of amusing ones. I don't know about this. You start with a big splat mark and make a schlock line down to the actual chunk. Matt Grusin explaining the mechanics of a key animation. Splunge. Nick Rusko Berger when asked for his professional opinion of a background. I don't want to get eaten while I'm testing this, Ginny Schmidt. But I really think he should wet himself, Frank Frazier. You can't print this shit, Charlie Shenton to Jerry Blair, VP, upon reading proposed ad copy for Rex. <laughs> Tale as old as time, the uh, dev team hates the marketing, uh, marketing teams, <laughs> what they want to do. No, the Roland sound is definitely working. I distinctly hear a dog getting squashed under a car. Brian Reynolds in one of the final bug meetings. But why are you being so nice to us? Michael Craighead and Mike Corcoran after their first meeting with Matt and Brian. <laughs> Matt and Brian after their first meeting with Michael Craighead and Mike Corcoran. So, do you think we can sell a game called Rex Nebula on the Cosmic Gender Bender? Bill Steely, CEO. It's actually a great question. Does anyone know how this game sold? The fact that it actually is, has, is now you know, still commercially sold digitally. Must have sold reasonably well. Can I be in the quotes? Bill Burton. Yes, you can, Bill. Yes, you can. And you are. Whatever you do, don't put me in the quotes, Ted Markley. Sorry, Ted. You're in the quotes now. I know someone who beat up the Redskin Huggets. Ken Race. Why can't I push the damn gurney? Yeah, exactly. How do you get across the damn stream? Why can't I go to the damn Pleasure Dome? L. Roro exploring the limits of the possible. Yeah, those were the red herrings. They're the red herrings. You want to put the gurney in the fan blade. Can we say damn in the quotes, Matt Grusin? It's a high-level programming thing that we don't want to explain to you right now. Ken Nushie to Brian Reynolds, lead programmer. Not Charlie Shenton. I really mean it. Don't put me in the quotes. Ted Markley. Ted, you got screwed. You got quoted, Ted. You got quoted. When Rex sees her coming right before she squashes him, don't you think he would be really scared and wet himself? Frank Frazier. This is the color cyan. Do you guys know what cyan is? Paul LaHaye is addressing the Rex art team. 
Wow. Next week, can we learn magenta? Yeah, we should go to CGA color palette. Cindy Lang, Bet Bacher, Batcher. Fool! Brian Reynolds every five minutes or so. Has either Brian or Matt had therapy? Frank Brown, rhetorical question. I think this is a bug. Jimmy Schmidt, as her screen went black. I feel sorry for the poor schmucks who don't have a mouse. Dave Ellis, wow. <laughs> that totally undercuts their, that saying how great their keyboard control scheme was in the manual. I want one. Nick Rusko Burger, plaintive cry. We're not splatting the fuzzy, we're just dropping a car on a dog. Anonymous producer. Yeah, pretty, pretty fucked up. The camera doesn't lie. Frank Fraser on rotoscoped art. Dialogue equals dialogue create, just fucking do it. Slightly edited line of Mad's library code. I have an ace in my hole, Ken Yishuei. I want a bat skeleton. Anne Marie Cox revealing her heart's desire. Sound blasters just don't do good dogs. Jim McConkey on trying to get Fido to bark. Yeah, that, well, the Roland was pretty bad, the yapping. My wife finds out I had anything to do with this, I'll be in deep trouble, Ted Markley. Is that the one sex scene? I want a divorce, <laughs> Helen Markley follows up with. Hey look, this game is a cool quotes thing at the end. Let's put one in our game. Brian Reynolds. Okay, but don't tell anyone we're ripping it off. Matt Grusin. Do you guys know which game they ripped off? Anyone know of any quotes like this? This is the first time I'm seeing a game with this feature. This streak of strange colors just appeared at the top of my screen, but look how it disappears when I move the mouse over it. Andy Mazurek, another day in the life of QA. So what's the problem? You found a bug, you fix the bug. Ryan Reynolds, Standy. Well, you could go and get a sex change and come back as a female, so we definitely need the in and out thing. Matt Grusin. Probably met in and out of the machine, but of course people took the in and out to mean sex. The old in and out. Those were all the quotes. The quotes with the most. Hello? Game? Okay, there we go. All right, so there are a few, at least a few more. Um, I want to see, I definitely want to see the deaths thing. I don't remember what the other... Oh, and here's the uh, the promo for Task Force 1942. By the way, we need to give out 11 Cedrics for the game. Whoops, that was one. Uh, here's an additional 10 for the game taking 11 hours and 4 minutes. Task Force 1942. New from Pros. Um Oh, this one. Oh, this one I had going directly there. Hang on. I've got to adjust the yeah. config so we can see the... Um, because we do want to see the, um, where is it? This not it? Oh, this is not it, no. This should be it. Because we want to see the, um, want to see the other features is what I'm trying to say. All right, give me a second here, we'll get that going. Maybe if I do it from here, that'll work. Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, does it have? Is this not configured? No, it's not. Okay. Oh, we can just run bonus EXE. Oh, cool, thanks. Thanks, hard work. Yeah, but I have to find the... Um, with the switch to DOSBox ECE, I have to remember where I have the... Oh, right, right, okay, that's where it is. All right, sorry, I just need to find out where the right config file is. Um, here it should be. Because I was looking at the other one. Yeah, okay. This should work. Yep, there we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's our first adventure, yeah. Yeah, we haven't played uh, Phantom of the Opera, or Return of the Phantom. But we did play Dragon Sphere. They also did Bloodnet, which was awful. 
You don't think they were too high? They never made a sequel. They only published three titles with the engine. Mm. And then they sold the engine. Yeah, for Riddle of Master Luth, that's right. All right, so let's view the selected death scenes. Oh, they're selected, so they're not all of them. Hopefully we get some good ones. Don't forget the rebreather. Okay, so that's what happens if you leave without it. Okay, so that we did not get that one. Damn. Okay, we did get this. The mine blows you up. <laughs> you see your legs floating about. Watch out for that tree. In this case, mine. Uh, I think we got this one. Yeah, we got that one. Yeah, it tears off your head. That was amazing. I think that was the first death we got. Maybe. Woman hiding in tree. Yeah, we got this one. Big mistake. It's strange why these weren't available via the main menu, though. Tasty. Hmm. We never saw that woman, I don't think, did we? Hi, I'm Rex. Hi, you're dead. Oh, no, maybe we did? Oh, no, I think we did get that. And then we... I had to fire something else up there. Bang, you're dead. Oh, don't think we got that one. Oh, so that's, yeah, that's if you go out of the chute without first uh, freeing, what's his name? If you don't free the Soros guy. Okay, we did get this one. Ah, okay, it was a separate team inside Microprose. Makes sense. Not by MPS Labs. Wow, they skipped all the way over here to the sea monster death? Are they going to show the dog death? Crunchy. The vase. Yeah, we got that one. Dang. Oh, that was it. They don't show the dog. Uh, I feel like there were a few others. Yes. All right, what is this evolution of Rex? Modern day Rex. Crow Magnon Rex. Is this shorter? Paleolithic Rex? Rex Anderthal? Rex Optithicus? What's up with that? <laughs> Tyrannosaurus Rex. Oh. Really? All for this stu stupid pun gag? <laughs> that was dumb. All right, let's view the sets. Is this just like background gallery? <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of work for that little <laughs> dumb pun. A brief tour of the Rex Nebular Studio sets. I mean, it's cool that they have these features, don't get me wrong. But <laughs> that was... Yeah, that's a little weird. Cool 3D rendering, huh? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Picture of Larry and Roger Wilco. New Baltimore asteroid. It's only a model. People on balcony. So not really a model. Shooting star. Colonel Stone's office. Genuine leather. Bridge of Major Cards Dreadnought. Cool chair panel, actually made of plastic. Roulette wheel and periscope. Oh, that's a roulette wheel back there. Refreshments and the aquarium. Who are these people anyway? They're crew members. Who do you think they are? Cool cutaway view of underground city. Oh yeah, and then we swam. Ah. Oh yeah, and then I guess we went surface in the jungle, yeah. Machapolis, the city of men. And they were on the island. Williams Bypass, there's Bruce's place. Buckluster video in Abdul's garage. Governor's penthouse. It's weird that we could never attempt to approach that from the ground level. Abandoned spaceport. Launcher hoops. There's something randomly in the water. What is that? 
Rex and Rox. Oh, Rox is the female equivalent. We got Twinkles, Rotunda, Rox, Rex, Olga, Zatox, and Boog. Oh, the monkey's name is Boog. And we got Guard, Ugg, Bud. Oh, yeah, our friend was Bud. Rex, Slosh, Pyro, Intern, and Lieutenant Xena. Huh. Okay, that was the sets. Uh, let's look at the cool stuff list first. Here are a few more interesting things you may want to try. All of these things involve cheating in one way or another, so you may not want to read this until you've solved the game normally. We have. Then you can play around with these cheat options. Watch the closing animations. It's brace to continue. As you may have already discovered, Rex's story is... Oh, really? There are different endings? One of which is a happy one. You can watch each of these endings simply by typing the proper command from the DOS prompt. Wow. Main menu. A quick death, honorable death, victory, and the decompression ending. So I'm guessing we got victory. So there are three bad endings. Quick death, honorable death, and decompression ending. The last of these, main menu W4, shows the epilogue. Okay, maybe if you don't install, like, yeah, the, the weapons module or something. Yeah, and the decompression ending is if you don't use the, um, the cement. Not the cement, the uh, poly cement to seal the crack. And then quick death's probably if you don't have the targeting module in there or whatever. And the last of these shows the epilogue. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, the decompression itself is handled with a special program code instead of an animation script. Be sure to play through the game normally first so that you won't spoil the ending for yourself. Then use the command line options to bring up instant replays for your friends. Oh, good. All my friends are here to watch this. Cheat mode. That's right, Rex Nebular does in fact contain a special cheat mode that we use during development. Now you too can make use of this special privileged set of keyboard commands. One word of warning, however, before you begin, these cheat keys were designed to be used by experienced programs. <laughs> Mostly that means that if they are not used with great care, the cheat keys can cause the game to crash or cause Rex to get permanently stuck somewhere. We'll tell you how to get into cheat mode and give you a few basic pointers on how to use it, but the rest is entirely at your own risk. Remember also that once you turn cheat mode on in a game, it will remain on even when you save that game. So any damage that might have been done by cheat mode will remain in effect for the game when you restore it. To turn cheat mode off, you must either start a new game or restore an old game from before you selected cheating. Finally, we strongly suggest that you play Rex all the way through before turning on cheat mode. First and foremost, this prevents cheat mode from spoiling the game for you. Secondly, it gives you a better idea of the intended storyline of Rex so that when you completely fill it up with cheat mode, you will realize what is happening. We must emphasize that cheat mode is really nothing more than a way to go bashing around the planet in the wrong order and at the wrong times. To activate cheat mode, you must first start a new game. Next, press the control key and hold it down. While con continuing to hold down the control key, type the letters wide pipe in sequence. When you are finished, a gray box containing the message uh, cheating enabled should appear. Once it appears, you can release the control key. Wow, so you have to hold down control while you type that in. Then press the space bar to clear the message from the screen. You are now in cheat mode. Wow, this is neat. I've never seen it. Well, that's not. I've probably seen a couple of game, uh, adventure games that have had similar kind of modes, but not that they like actually publicly disclosed to uh, the players like this. It's neat. Once you have entered cheat mode, you can teleport yourself to any location in the game to do this press control T. Okay. It's finding out the proper room number. Oh, wow. So here they give all the room numbers. It's kind of neat. So you can go anywhere at any time. Oh, and these are the different sections. Yeah. Metropolis, lower, upper. And you can move objects around. Wow. Okay. So that's, I think we got the idea. All right. And then selected music. Is this just a jukebox? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, it's probably not really worth going through. But... Hey, Mr. Viking. All right, so the one thing we do want to see, though, are the uh, the other endings that we missed. Absolutely. So, what was it? Main menu W1 or something? Was it like this? Hmm. Yeah, it is pretty neat they did include this. Hang on, I think I did something wrong probably. Maybe I was missing another colon. 
So let's go back to, uh, the, was it the cool stuff list? Yeah. Oh, okay. I missed the, the hyphen. So hyphen W colon one. Okay. So main menu hyphen W colon one. Okay, so these, yeah, if we didn't put in the right modules or the uh, cement, or the poly cement on the windshield crack, we would have gotten these like death endings. You just get shot out of the sky. I guess because you can't fire. Is there a special like death message? Let's see. Oh, epilogue. A quick death. You pull on the throttle and zoom out into space, flush with your recent victory. Unfortunately, Major Karg still lies in wait for you. This time she scores a direct hit. Too bad you couldn't find a replacement card for that shield modulator slot. The end. Wow. So if you didn't take the shield modulator off of your crashed ship at the, at the very start of the game, you basically locked yourself out from the good ending. A <laughs> fool. Wow, they haven't had the fourth yet. And then you get screwed. Wow. That is rough. You'd have to re no play the game entirely over to get the good ending. Ooh. Fool. Okay, then you just get the credits. All right. So let's see the others. We got two others. It's good that we did dodge that bullet indeed. All right, main, oops, main menu, W2. This is, uh, was this the one with the, oh, let's see. This is probably the one if you don't have the targeting module, I would guess. So you have the screens to protect yourself from incoming fire, but maybe you don't have the fire. You don't have the ability to target your weapons. Yeah, so that one you at least get shots off, but... Your wayward shots. An honorable death. You pull on the throttle and zoom out into space, flush with your recent victory. Unfortunately, Major Karg still lies in wait for you. This time, she doesn't plan to miss. Her first volley bounces harmlessly off your shields, and you realize that installing that spare shield modulator has just saved your life. You quickly return fire, hoping to create a distraction and slip past the dreadnought. Since you didn't have time to repair the targeting computer, however, you are forced to rely entirely on manual sighting, an area in which you never excelled. Apparently, you can't hit the broadside of a barn. Karg's second volley penetrates through to the hyperdrive core and causes a nifty-looking explosion. The end. Is it going to give us the fool? I'm guessing so. Give me a fool, give me a fool. Oh, no, dang. You get dang instead. So I'm guessing the uh, the the non-use of the cement is probably going to be the worst ending because it'll like it'll be like the quickest. Is it credits now? Yeah. Okay. Now they made something about like the animation here or something, but okay. Whoops. Oh shoot. Okay. Main menu. Oh. Oh, right. The decompression ending. Straight to the epilogue. You pull on the throttle and zoom out into space, flush with your recent victory. Unfortunately, you fail to notice a large crack in the windshield. As the ship enters the hard vacuum of outer space, a bad accident happens. 
Do we have to do this in-game to actually see the animation? I think they, they, they made some disclaimer. The end. Oops. Okay. So yeah, what did they say about the... Um... Did they say we could get that from playing it or is that the only way to get it? Okay, the last of these shows the epilogue only since the decompression itself is handled with special program code instead of an animation script. Okay, so I think we should be able to get to that if we just do it ourselves, right? I don't think it'll take long, maybe like two minutes to get it based on our save game spots, hopefully. Well, this one we already did, so we gotta go to a prior slot. So we got basically put in everything except for the, uh, the cement. So probably this, yeah. Because I remember at the anti-grav controls, we had already put in the thing, the stuff. Well, hopefully, oh no, we may have already done it here. Shoot, yeah, I think this is after we put in that stuff. Yeah, okay, we gotta go, we gotta go one, one prior. Just to see that anim what that death looks like. Okay, 1912, yeah. Okay, so this is when we get to the, the place. So probably what we should do is just to save, um, if we just switch these buttons on first. So we go, um, our timer so hopefully that'll trigger the remote from falling from the uh, tree or the other ship sorry guys hope you don't mind our checking out all this bonus content before we do the uh, the raffle and the showdown and everything oh, actually now we should probably well I don't know whether we should. We're gonna have to come back there and switch it to remote, but I don't know if we need to get the remote first. Any combat? No, there were no action sequences in the game. That's what you mean. So I guess we gotta see the animal die first before this falls down. Okay, and we go back, does the thing fall? No? Yeah, okay, now this. Yeah, and that was from the tree, not even from the ship. It's weird. Okay, so now let's turn it on in the remote mode, and then, uh, yeah, all we have to do is then walk back to the ship and. Um, Put in the module, the modulator in the module, but don't cement the place. Okay. So we uh, sort of remote. Yes, yes, you do, ribbons. If you have to ask the question, the answer is yes. That means you're considering it. So I would say yes. If you truly, oh no, the game crashed, really? Oh, come on. Damn. All right, maybe I'll do a quick YouTube look just to see if we can find it there. Um, yes, okay, there is one. All right, so let's go over there. Um, no, not, not this one. Hang on, sorry. You know what, let's just do it over here. Okay. Oops. All right, yeah, that'll, that'll work. Thing of, uh... So let's see what, if he does, which one he does first.
you have the 3D mode enabled here. So this looks like the first time in the video where he goes into uh, space. Five. Okay, yep, here we go. This is what we wanted. <laughs> oh, he goes purple. It's what you see if you fail the copy protection as well. Wow, his head blows up. Epilogue. Yeah, and then we got the epilogue. That, yeah, we've seen. We've seen. All right, very good. So let's head to our Hall of Adventure now that we've seen all the bonus content as well. Add to bookshelf number two for game uh, 277, Rex Nebular and the Cosmic Gender Bender, putting it up on the shelf. Yahoo! Yahoo, indeed. <laughs>